Yes, go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna begin with the purpose of this meeting, which is to help people um, understand and use the new tools that Mom Stop the Harm has developed to put pressure on the federal government to end the overdose crisis. Uh, because uh, it's, you know, about time. And in fact, it's long overdue. Uh, the tools, as you may know by now, are one, a petition to the government of Canada on the overdose crisis, and two, a draft covering letter to MPs that people can use once they've collected signatures on the petition. Um, Angela, would you be able to just put the petition and letter up for people to see just in case they haven't seen it? This one? That's the petition. And the letter? I can only do one at a time. Okay. Um, yeah. Go to the letter and then, then I'd like to go back to the petition. Okay, yeah, so there's sure. the letter. So these are the two tools. N now, could you go back to the petition for just a bit? Thank you. Um, okay, so as you can see, the petition urges the government of Canada to declare the overdose crisis a national public health emergency and to take steps to end the overdose deaths and overdose injuries immediately collaborate with the provinces and territories to develop comprehensive pan-Canadian pan overdose action plan, ensure that any plan considers reforms that other countries have used, such as uh, legal regulation of drugs to ensure safe supply, decriminalization for personal use, and changes to flaw drug policy and policing, and ensure that this emergency is taken seriously with adequately funded programming and supports. So as you can see under the text, there's a place for people to put signatures and addresses. Um, in terms of addresses, people have a choice. They can either put their full home address or they can put their city and province. It's probably easier just to put the city and province. But in terms of the signatures, um, there's no choice. People have to write their signature, they can't print. Um, it's probably a good idea to check after someone's signed to make sure that they've done it properly. Um, people sometimes just do what the person who signed before them did um, and not what the instructions tell them to do. Uh, you should know that the signatures won't count um, unless that they're done properly. Um, I found that some people like to print uh, rather than write the signature and found a lot of people leave out their province for some reason. Um, but not to worry, you have options. Uh, you can scratch things out and just have people do it again. Or uh, you can start, by, um, or you can just ignore it and get an, an extra signature. Uh, or you can start by saying something like, um, please be sure to read the instructions um, before signing. Unfortunately, the sig sig a signature won't count unless it's done properly. Uh, but that's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, anyway, um, does anyone have any questions about the petition or anything I've said about step one? So if, if the signature's illegible, that's fine? Yep. Okay. As far as I know, I, I mean, most signatures are illegible, so I don't think they could discount most people's signatures. So I'm just assuming it is. I've never heard that you know, that it wasn't. Oh, I get lots of signatures like from students and I couldn't read them if I tried. No, well, most of the people, most of the 108 signatures that I got were illegible. Oh, okay. except for mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. What's the timing on delivering this to the uh, government of Canada? Uh, as soon as possible is ideal. Um, that basically we can give them to MPs and hope that they have time to, I mean, up until the election. Now, if your petition's sort of in sort of an MP's hands when the election gets called, it may not make it to the floor. Um, and once the election happens, it's sort of null and void. Uh, so- I'm wondering if, um We've got an election in BC in just a few weeks, and I'm wondering if, you know, this could be a way to influence candidates in our election. Um, I know very little about BC politics, and um, 
mostly what I, I've been trying to do or what I've been hoping to do with Moms Stop the Harm is because I know there's a lot of provincial work going on. But what I'd really like to do is have a federal focus, um, more of a federal focus, because it's the feds that hold all the policy levers on decriminalization, on legal regulation. Um, I mean, it's them. So I'm, you know, I'm hoping when is for the election, bit. Diana? When, when is the election? Uh, I think it's October 24th. October Sunday. 24th. Okay. Yeah. And also, I'm wondering, I mean, a lot of organizations do online petitions. Do they not hold the same weight or, or why um, is mom's going with the written petition? Um, Surprisingly, uh, paper petitions have more advantages than online parliamentary petitions. The online um, parliamentary petition process is a bit different. You have to do it within a fairly short period of time, and then only one person gets to present. With paper petitions, we've had, you know, we, you know, you only need 25 signatures, and you can give them to multiple MPs, and you can have them coming day after day. So, um, that was the purpose of that. Uh, there, there are other, I think, other strengths. It, I, I think it's a good way to um, engage, make people feel part of something, um, build the base. So it doesn't have to be your MP. Let's say your MP is not that up to presenting the petition, but you know the guy in Port Alberni's already done it once. You can fire them off. I, I, will, I will get to that um, later on in another step. So can I just put that on hold for a minute? Okay. Can I just ask a question, Catherine? It's Patricia Law. Sure. Um, will you be talking about whether or not you can send the same petition, like the same copy with signatures to multiple? Um, one. Okay, yeah, I will answer that right now because um, that's not in step one, step two, or step three. Um, Okay, so I asked the Office on Parliament and Health that question. Um, I said, you know, can I as an individual send the same petition to the same MP multiple times? And I didn't think they responded as clearly as I wanted them to, but this is what they said, yes. For paper petitions, the same text can be used for multiple petitions. When a member submits the petition, they can submit as many petitions as they want, even the, um, if the text is the same, as long as the division of the petitions are clear to our office. So uh, the short answer is, it, is yes. So, hmm. sorry, just to be clear, if I got this filled out and got 25 signatures, Mm -hmm. I could send a copy with 25 signatures to multiple MPs, yeah. or I could only send it to one MP multiple times, or both. You could do both. And, and I will get um, talk about that a little bit more later on as well. Okay. I, 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 have a, I have a suggested strategy, but I think that's under step two. Okay, thank you. Sorry to jump ahead. That's okay. Um, so I'm gonna move on to step one, um, if that's okay. And Angela, oh, good for you. Thank you. Okay. So step one says download and print the petition, get a family, get family, friends and allies to sign our petition. You'll need a minimum of 25 signatures. Note a couple of extra signatures always helps in case someone has not properly completed the petition. So I have a few tips uh, relating to step one. So I'm gonna run through them uh, first and then go to questions on step one, if that's okay. Okay, uh, first a tip on how to ask. Um, I usually ask people if they would consider signing the petition rather than asking them to sign the petition. Um, Cause I think it, it acknowledges that they have a choice, um, which I think is helpful and respectful. Um, Okay, now COVID tip. I collected quite a few signatures through the mail. Um, that is, I sent the petitions to family members and friends by mail and email, sometimes even enclosing a stamp. Um, 
when it was the mail and I asked out of town people to mail it back to me. Um, and the mail's pretty COVID friendly. Um, another COVID tip, um, if people are nervous about using um, your pen, you can always carry a Lysol wipe around to wipe down the pen. Um, that said, I, I didn't find that people were concerned about um, using my pen, um, but I did wash my hands after they used my pen. Um, okay, this isn't a tip so much as an observation. Um, I was pretty surprised um, by the number of people, by how many people actually signed the petition. Um, I had my doubts that a certain person I know uh, would sign because they're pretty conservative and the conservatives don't tend to like decriminalization um, or safe supply. But the person in question did sign the petition, um, making me very happy in the process. Uh, my stepdaughter uh, was helping uh, as well. Um, and she also remarked how good people were about si signing. She said she had no idea what to expect. Um, or how people would respond to her request uh, to sign the petition. Uh, and she said she was really pleasantly surprised um, by uh, how many people were willing to support the petition. Uh, final tip, uh, you may want to prepare yourself for uh, people who say no, uh, they don't want to sign, um, which is the right, I suppose. Uh, I, I, I figure it's easy enough to say something like, um, thank you for time, or no worries. Uh, that said, I didn't have anyone refuse. Um, okay, that's it for the tips. Does anyone have any questions relating to step one or anything I've said? I just um, wanna point out that I did put the website um, in, uh, in the chat box. So essentially uh -huh. this page is on the Mom Stop the Harm uh, website under uh, personal blog, blog and events, and then personal blog. And then you might have to scroll down a couple, but the information is there with the links to the petition and the links to the covering letter. So if anybody is wondering, that's where this page is. Okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. what, why isn't it under the petition under resources? Because that's where I'd go look for it. Yeah, it, that's a good question. I think Petra, <laughs> Petra likes using the personal blog. Um, we can certainly we can certainly add it to resources, but there was there's really no no heading for it. Mm -hmm. So we could add a petition heading under resources as well, as well and have it in both areas. But um, for now, for the people who are on here, that's where it is. And I'll talk with Petra and see if we want to add another page to the resources as petition for sure. Okay. Maybe so we could call it a, ca a campaign. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll see what, uh, what we do about that. Okay. Um, so any questions about collecting uh, signatures before I move on to step two? Okay. Okay, so on to step two. Um, step two says, send the petition, uh, send the signed MS petitions along with a covering letter to your MP or another MP if you prefer. We have linked a sample covering letter that you can use. Uh, copy, paste, and customize the letter. You can get your MP to um, MP's contact information by calling 1-800-463. 6868 or going to the our commons URL. Uh, remember mail to MPs is posted free and um, B MPs are there to help you with matters like this. It's their job. I think the first thing I should mention is that you have to send the MPs the original signatures. You can't send them copies. So, um, sorry. Was that a question? Well, it was going to be. Okay. <laughs> wait, I can wait if you like. Okay. Um, and I suspect some of you and some of you expressed um, or are wondering about um, what MPs to send your petitions to. As a rule, um, you should probably start with your own MP, I think. Um, your constituent. MPs tend to care about their constituents. Uh, it sounds crass, but you're a potential vote. Um, and beyond that, many MPs genuinely want to do a good job for their constituents. Plus, 
you should know that an MP can present a petition even if they don't agree with the petition. Um, but they don't have to if they don't want to. Uh, the official rules say, quote, any member of parliament may be asked to present a paper petition even if he or she does not represent the petitioner's electoral district, but a member is not required to present a petition he, um, he or she has received. The member may choose not to present it or ask another member to present the petition. In accepting to present a petition, a member is not necessarily agreeing with the opinions um, or requests set out in the petition. So, this leads to another issue, which is um, what happens if your MP doesn't um, want to present your petition. Um, if, it, and if, if an MP won't present the petition, I think it might be a good strategy to uh, ask an NDP MP in your province um, if they would present it. For instance, I'm, um, if my Liberal MP, Catherine McKenna, won't present my peti petition. I'm planning on asking either Matthew Green or Charlie Angus. Uh, both are um, NDP MPs from Ontario, and I'm from Ontario. Um, I think it'd be good to have petitions coming from all over the country. Uh, at the moment, they're mostly coming from BC. Uh, the government needs to see that people all over the country care about the overdose crisis and not just BC. Uh, and I'm suggesting NDP MPs only because I think we can safely assume that they will present the petitions. But if you can't decide um, or just want help, um, I think, you know, Mum Stop the Harm can, you know, always, you know, just contact us and we can help you figure it out. Now, in terms of finding um, your MP, um, I've met, as I mentioned uh, in step two, there's a phone number and a URL um, on the petition and also on the sample letter to M MPs. The phone number is an Election Canada number. Um, all you have to do is tell the person who answers the phone that, you know, you're trying to figure out who your MP is um, or what their constituency office is. And um, they should be able to help you, uh, but you'll need your postal code. As for the URL, the URL is a Parliament of Canada website page. Um, it will take you to a page uh, with three rotating banners. Um, if you scroll down. Catherine. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just one point, because there's a period there on the URL. Mm -hmm. And with the period, if they, if they highlight that with the period, it's going to send them to a um, so you can't use the period when you're highlighting that the R Commons. Is this, okay. not, is, this, dot CA. is this not the right website? It yeah, is that's the right, right one. I, I didn't it have did. a problem connecting. You um, didn't? Okay, but I did when there was a period. Okay. Hmm. I, I didn't, and I think you just did it as I just well. did it, yeah. So maybe you yeah. had an old... Maybe you had an old, uh, maybe you tried it when, because I did change the URL. I, yeah. Uh, there was okay. an extra period there. Yeah. So, so okay. I clicked on it and this is what you'll get. So here okay. you can here. go here and type in your postal yeah. code and essentially it should be able to um, give you. Well, if you go to the website. Okay. Yeah. So you basically you're looking for find. Um, okay. Here, why don't you type in my website? Or okay. My, okay, so type in K1Y3T7. See, and so then, that's, that's my MP, but I didn't send it to him because I know that he would not, he wouldn't do anything with it. So I used, I sent it to the NDP um, MP. So right. here's Catherine's. Okay. And so it'll show Catherine McKenna as your MP, correct? Okay, so basically if you press on the name, it will take you to, okay. So you go here, now press contact and that will give you the constituency office. Yeah. It's a, it's a bit of clicking, but it's pretty straightforward. So just look for fine, Type in your postal code, 
click on, you know, your MP's card and it'll take you to roles, work, contact and. And um, Catherine, is it best to send it to the constituency office and not the House of Commons office? Yeah, definitely yeah. the constituency office. You want them to, you know, you want them to know you're a constituent. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. Where am I here? Okay. Um, any questions about the, about step two, finding your MP and sending a letter requesting that they present? So can you send it to, like, you know how you said you could send it, so our government in Alberta is UCP, but our NDP is more favorable to resolve mm -hmm. the opioid crisis. Can we send it to both constituency offices? Uh, you could, if you have two petitions, you can. I mean, you, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so I'd have to, because I couldn't take a photocopy of one. No. Right. No. They only accept originals. And I would like, I would start with your, M, you know, your MP um, and then go from there. So if he doesn't send it, can I ask him to send it back to me? <laughs> well, the covering letter asks him to do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all in the covering letter. Okay. Um, and uh, do you want to go to the covering letter now? Are you ready, Catherine? Or? Sure. Okay. So it says, um, like to thank you for reading this letter and considering my request. If for whatever reason you're not able or willing to present my petition, I would very much appreciate it if you would return the petition to me. Um, and if you, you know, I'm mean, step three, uh, which we're coming to, uh, we can talk a little bit more about, about that. Okay, back to step three, maybe? Okay, here we go. Okay, so step three says, call your MP in a couple of weeks if they haven't heard anything and ask if he or she uh, will be presenting your petition in the House of Commons. Um, what is said in the House of Commons is documented in ha the Hansard Index, which will allow us to track the progress of our petitions. Please let us know if your MP is reluctant to do so as we can help you find an MP who supports our cause. Uh, you can reach us at info at mumstoptheharm.com. So just to let you know, I, I couldn't wait two weeks. <laughs> so I emailed my MP yesterday after only a week uh, to see if she'd received my petitions and I'm waiting to hear back. Uh, which reminds me, step three says that you can call your MP. Uh, you can also email your MP, of course. Um, I don't have too much more to say about step three. Uh, but you might. Uh, does anyone have any questions about step three? Pretty straightforward. Do we want to go over the covering letter? It's pretty easy, um, you know, and you can copy and paste it and customize it if you like. Um, has anybody, has everybody had an opportunity to read, to read it? Well, maybe we could just highlight the places that they sure. that need to um, be filled in. Yeah. So your name and address at the top, then the date and the MP's name and put member of parliament. You want to be sure to put member of parliament so that the Canada Post employee knows that it's free postage. Um, and then the MP's constituency address and then dear Kath, dear Ms. McKenna, um, I, I thought that sounded, I thought Ms. McKenna sounded weird. So I was, I looked around the, the internet to see, you know, how other people addressed her, but even the prime minister addresses her as dear Ms. McKenna. So if it's good enough for Justin, it's good enough for me. <laughs> um, and then the petition just, you know, basically ask them to present, talks a little bit about the opioid crisis, I mean, the, the, the opioid crisis, um, and outlines the petition, what the petition basically says in brief. Uh, there's uh, part, of, part of it also talk on a personal note, 
Um, you know, you want them to know you've been directly affected if you have, uh, and you can, you know, leave that out or customize it. Um, and then you ask them to send it back if they're not willing to do it. Um, and that's about it. Um, so are there any questions before I conclude? Okay. Um, I have another I, question. Sure. <laughs> so if I go out and get 25 signatures yeah. and send it along, and then on another day, yeah, I go out and I get another 25. I can just keep doing this. I don't have to wait until I've got like hundreds and hundreds of signatures. I can keep just doing 25 at a time. Absolutely. Um, I would do a couple, well, you know, I would do a couple extra um, just in case, you know, a couple of signatures are invalid for whatever reason. You know, 27 is right. probably a better to aim for. Or you can just look at the petition and see what you think. If you think everybody's filled it out correctly, then go for it. Um, but yes, uh, I suspect that's what, uh, Gord Johns has been doing. Um, I'm know. just thinking time-wise, it's easier for me to go out and do it one day here and then maybe in a couple weeks go out and do another one. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, perfect. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so being from Alberta, I believe we only have one NDP MP in our entire province, which is difficult to keep breathing through. Uh, so if, uh, like, she would, is there any other suggestions, I guess, if we can't get our own MPs to send the petitions? So if you're, if you're your own um, member of parliament won't do it, I would mm -hmm. suggest sending it to the NDP MP in your province. That would be mm -hmm. probably a really good thing to do. Okay. Um, alternatively, you could send it, I, I believe, um, what's his name? Don Davies? Don Davies? Yeah, in BC. Uh, yeah, I believe he's the health critic for the yeah. Democratic Party, but yes. It, but then again, you know, that's a, no offense, BC, but um, we need we need petitions coming from other places too. Yeah. Right. Right. No, I I totally get that. I just was wondering. I sent my petition away about two weeks ago. I still haven't heard anything back, so I am going to start contacting the office. I'm not okay. hopeful though. You yeah. sent it. You sent it to the uh, your MP there. No, yes, that's together. correct. Okay, that, I sent mine to Heather McPherson and no, I, I sent her an email today uh -huh. um, to ask whether or not, you know, she had received it and, and what's going on with it, but I don't know when I'll hear back. Okay. Okay. I tend to like email too, because I don't know, it's just easier in some ways, but um, off, I think um, often you get a better response if you call. You know, you got someone on the phone, they have to deal with you. So mm -hmm. polling can be good too. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, yes, from Patricia, please. Um, are you tracking somewhere on the website how many people are participating and what MPs have been contacted or any results? Or is there a way to keep track of that? Or the, the, the only real way to keep track of it is once they get presented in the house, we have the MP presenting because people don't tell us when they send in their petitions. So once they get presented in the house, we know. Okay. So that's, have, have I, I check the answer every day. How many have been presented? Um, well, that's what I'm just what I'm going to talk about when I conclude. Okay. Anybody else before I conclude? There was that one question that I saw from um, uh, Lori asking about uh, the before the federal election. Did you mean Lori to present the petitions before the federal election? That's what you were. Yeah, that's. What I was just confirming. Yeah. 
I just want to clarify that, Catherine, if you can just uh, touch on that a little bit, like, is the house, like, how late do they go before, before they, they um, stop for the session before Christmas? Is it about the 11th of December or something? I think, uh, if I remember correctly, it's the 11th of December, and then it's usually late, or mid to late January when they reconvene. Right. So um, ideally, we want to get those petitions in November, the latest, so that there's opportunity to, to have them presented before the uh, session is closed for the, for the year. And then is it worth sending them in after December 11th or so? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, because the, the MP takes time to deal with them and yeah. then the petition clerk usually takes a minimum of... Uh, three to five days to uh to look at them um and then i don't know how long it is after the clerk looks at them and checks um before they come to the house but so we're going to continue to promote the petition um throughout the fall and into the winter and even you know throughout christmas and in january um so if you do a petition, you know, as Lori said, you can do another one. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be like a one-time deal. And so um, if you are in a workplace and you want to have a petition going all the time, or if you're going to be in an area where uh, there's going to be people around that you can maybe gather um, uh, signatures, then, you know, have that petition in your car jam. <laughs> and and then you can you can gather those names and you know the more petitions that we can get presented in the house of commons then the better and i think what we will do um is uh as we get petitions and they are called in we'll try and share them as we can like i think there was one last week that was um a french speaking was she from quebec who print i think there was a quebec one that was presented last week, right? In the Senate, that was bit. I, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> it happened. Yeah. So um, the, the, the petitions are actually, you know, they're starting to make waves and I think it's really important. Mom Stop the Harm has been called out several times. So, I, and I think, so I think it's really important. The more petitions that we can get in, the better. The petitions I see as a, re- a long-term strategy in the run-up to the election. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, they show that we have support um, and government representatives notice when um, petitions are presented day after day. And I think it forces them in a small way to bear witness to the overdose crisis. And um, ultimately, we hope they're going to nudge MPs to take better positions in the federal election than they did last time. Was I mean the liberal position read the last time? But I thought the house was prorogued and they weren't sitting. But am I just behind the eight ball? It was prorogued. It's not anymore. Okay. Any more? Okay. So I'd just like to finish by mentioning that MPs have repeatedly um, raised the overdose crisis uh, since they returned to Parliament on September twenty third. Uh, a lot of the comments came um, during the debate or the speech from the throne, um, but there have been petitions. Gord Johns from BC um, has presented three petitions already. Um, so it's it's going well, and I think um, it would be really good to you know keep up the momentum. So thank you for anything you can do. Um, I'd like to wish everybody luck for with their signature collecting, and um, please, 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 do- don't hesitate to let us know if you have any questions or problems because um, we can probably help. That's it. And, and I just also want to add that if you do, when you do send in your petition um, and uh, just let us know, you can email us at info at momstoptheharm.com and just let us know, you know, my petition uh, was sent in and uh that way we can sort of keep track a little bit and Catherine is checking the the website to find out um who is sharing so we will get that information we'll try to share it as much as we can